Hey, it's Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project, and I'm sitting with uh, Jim again. Welcome. Thank you. So, um, we enjoyed doing the video last time, and we're doing another one. So, today the topic is around guest posting, and, you know, we're going to go in and out, and I'm not 100% sure what all we're going to talk about, but um, one thing I can say is if you look back, uh, a few posts, and I'll link below this video. Uh, Jim was successful in getting like several, many, many guest posts. I'm not even sure how many, but in the particular post that I'm thinking of, uh, Jim got like six guest posts in just a few weeks, and his site was brand new, and I thought it was really impressive. But at this point, we're sort of thinking about the quality of guest posts. So um, I will actually turn it over to you, Jim, to ask some questions, because I know before we started recording, we were getting into it, but then we thought, hey, we should save it right. when we're rolling here. <laughs> well, yeah, like you said, uh, when I first started out, <clears throat> it was fairly easy to get a lot of you know, positive response back from people who wanted me to write for them. It was great. Uh, but just starting out, it was all about you know any kind of link back, you know, whether it be to social profiles or just to the site in general, was you know, I was taking any kind of low-hanging fruit I could get. Uh, and now, as it's become more, or I want to take more of a strategic approach. It's how to analyze, you know, what pages I'm ranking well for, and how to start selecting more of a, a detailed approach to guest posts and backlinks, and, and how to select my anchor text and how that might affect everything mm -hmm. play out. Got it. Okay. So to like refine the question, it sounds like you wonder where on your own site you should be getting, you know, links to right. from these guest posts. Right. Okay. So that's a good question because like Jim said, when you're starting out, I mean, you're doing say like blog comments, stuff like that. So it may not actually, you know, be um, super strategic or directed at a particular area. You're just like, I need to get some links to my site. Right. That's fair. There's a time for that and it's early on. But now you've landed a couple guest posts. So, you know, people have accepted um, that they, they want to hear from you. Right. <laughs> so, which is good. <laughs> so now it's like, where do you want to get uh, those links to your site? You want to get it to, uh, you want to have those links on guest posts pointing to generally your affiliate articles. That's the best case scenario because you want those affiliate articles to rank. Sure. The best way for them to rank is to have links pointing directly at them. So just bottom line, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, or sorry, not the easiest. That's the best way to do it. It is not the easiest way to do it. Um, because if you're, let's say you land a guest post on a, on a nice site and um, you write it up, it's a topic they, they're go, going to enjoy and their audience will enjoy it, all that stuff. And you throw a link in there. And it's some sort of um, like super affiliate page with a right. tons of affiliate links, and it's called like you know best um, whatever item. I have no idea what you say. <laughs> like uh, uh, pen, we have pen here, so probably no one's gonna create a site <laughs> on that. But you know, it's best blue pen to write with, and you know the the blogger may say uh, you know just too natural. Is, clearly an affiliate page and I really don't want to link to that. Um, so anyway, it may be a little harder for that reason. So, um, you know, we'll go a couple layers into this. So if you can, you should try and get links to the pages that you want to rank. Sure. And the anchor text you should use should be um, probably uh, something that contains the anchor text that you want to Really relevant. Rank for. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so best blue pin or something like that. Or now, I have a couple pages that are one and a host of at number two. Is there any benefit to aiming backlinks at something that's already ranking really high just to kind of cement your footing there? Yes, I think so. It's kind of one of those deals where, um, you know, you're already a little bit ahead of the competition. Right. And they're probably gunning for you, right? They can go see what backlinks you have mm -hmm. and they can match them. Maybe not directly because you're doing guest posts, so they can't necessarily get guest posts there, but they can get other links that are comparable. Sure. So if you um, just 
don't do anything to improve. Just like everything in life. If right. you don't do anything to improve, like other people are going to get better than you. Right. So you should, you know, occasionally, you don't have to be as aggressive, but you should keep getting links to sure. the pages that you want to stay, right. like, ranking number one. Because certainly you displace someone else. Oh, yeah. So this yeah. is a zero-sum game situation. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, as far as, you know, the... The second layer that I was about to get into is, um, you know, you may not be able to get links to that affiliate article directly. So instead, another approach you could take is um, where maybe you, you talk about um, pens and writing with pens, and it's something like not affiliate. It's just a Ligacy, nice, right? Yeah, writing. yeah, exactly. So you just write a nice article that you can probably get backlinks to, and there's no affiliate content in it. Within that article on your own site, you can, you know, put the link to your affiliate page. Sure. So you're sort of using it as a buffer. Um, you know, this helpful article is a buffer article so that you can get links to it. People will not uh, question that link as much as one that's filled with affiliate content. Sure. So, so that's sort of how I think about it. Do you have any questions? Um, no, it makes it that? makes sense with the kind of the insulation layer page because you can always pass that juice down as you put in your own kind of backlink structure on your site. So. Yes. And that's a really, I mean, technically you probably want to have a, you know, roughly a 50, 50 balance of like the affiliate, non affiliate content anyway. Sure. So you may as well have like links going to your overall site. Right. So, um, you know, one thing we talked about before, um, we started recording also is that anchor text. So, you know, thinking about um, the guest post and then thinking about where you want to have the article, uh, or sorry, where you want to have the link pointing to on your own site, um, at that point, you, you should already be thinking about the anchor text that you right. want to use. So you can be aggressive and use like the exact match anchor text. Sure. You don't want to do that every single time. Um, you want to mix it up some. So maybe you add a few extra words around mm -hmm. it said that it's just a longer phrase, something natural. I mean, if you go, you know, just read blogs, you'll see sometimes it'll be like, a, you know, click here for more information about blue pens. Other times it may just say blue pens, and sometimes it may have the URL listed. Sure. Not as often these days, but right. people do that. Um, so that said, you should have an idea about, like, what your anchor text is before you even send your um, like your pitch email sure. to the blogger because you want to know or you, you want to have the plan in place so you know that you can fit that anchor text into the sure. article. So that said, um, you really have to imagine the whole process start to finish before you even start. Yeah, kind of an outline to work off of. Yeah, sure. So um, you'll be able to you know, get your anchor text in there that you want specifically, as long as you know um, that you could fit it into the article and link back, fit it into the guest post so you can link back to the article on sure. your site. Yeah. So. Yeah, I suppose that covers most of, uh, most of what I was interested in. Um, obviously, you run across a lot of bloggers who will accept guest posts and they say, you know, you know one link will be okay. If not, you know, I'll give you a link to your social profiles or, or to the site in general. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> is there any benefit to, you know, off the homepage starting to build that same link structure? Like you would link back to a content article to link out to an affiliate article. Could you put some links on the homepage? Um, on your homepage to your affiliate articles? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a nice way to, like, help spread the link juice sure. through your site. Because a lot of times... A lot of times, most of the links will be going to your homepage, um, unless you're really intentional about like sending right. them to the inner pages. I kind of like to send them to the inner inner pages most mm -hmm. often, um, but a lot of times you will end up with you know just as many links going to the homepage. So yeah, on your homepage, you could you know set up. Uh, like your main pillar articles, like sure. click here for you know this review area and this other silo here, and then it's at and least it spread out. out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Cool. So that's that's actually the right way to do it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. 
So um, I'm trying to think of any other guest posting related, you know, things. We're, you know, obviously skipping a lot of the details around like the mechanics of, uh, like the easy mechanics of how to do a guest post. And I'll post some links, uh, some other actually guest posts that I've written about guest posts that are posted on other <laughs> sites. <laughs> um, let's see. The other thing that happens pretty often is... Um, you'll send out prospecting emails and then they'll say, sure, we'd love to have you guest post. Here are our rates um, for posting. Mm -hmm. So they want a sponsorship. So that's one thing that happens. Um, I don't like doing those because 90% of the time um, they are going to make those no follow links sure. because they're accepting money for it. It's against the Google terms of service for them to like accept money for links like that. It's against the terms of service for you to like pay for links. Um, so I usually shy away from those just because you're essentially buying links and there'll probably be no follow. Um, the other thing that happens is you'll, they'll send back a list of their, their network, right? So they'll say, um, yeah, we'll accept your guest post. Like here's the rate and then here are 10 other sites and here's the rate for those. So, um, Essentially, they have like a private blog network, although they're not branding it that way. They may even be, say, all around like the, the pencil and writing niche mm -hmm. to continue with our fake <laughs> niche. Um, so they may be all around the same sort of topic. So it's sort of relevant. And they may actually just, I mean, technically, that's a small media company. I mean, sure. that's fine. They can do that. Um, but they will, uh, you know typically be low quality. When you start looking through the articles, you'll see that they're all sort of, you know, links that have been purchased. It's pretty obvious because you'll see like very rich anchor text and then you'll see that, um, you know, the articles are pretty crappy. You'll also notice that there's probably no like organic traffic. Sure. If you were to look them up on like SEMrush or something like that. So, don't pay for links. And if you're trying to get guest posts and someone says, hey, just pay us for that, you should probably, you know, find a different one. Um, I mean, unless, of course, like you, you believe that that article may actually bring you traffic, but most of the time it probably won't. Sure. So, okay. Do you have any other questions that you could think of? Geez, not off the top of my head, no. Uh, All right. How many, I mean, how many links should you, like, okay, if I'm going after a guest posting campaign for a certain article I'm looking to rank for, I mean, obviously there's no, like, no more than five, right? I mean, there's no set rule like that. But how many links do you want to aim at something before you go, or I want to aim at a different one now and try and build up that one? Gotcha. Um, That's a good question. Usually, I will stick with one, like, page that I'm trying to get links to until it ranks number one. Sure. And then move to another one that yeah. kind of matches your criteria. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the reason why is you may as well focus your efforts on the, the one page that you're trying yeah, to get ranked. big money pages. Sure. And if you could get that one, whatever it is, to rank number one, you'll probably be able to make more money than if you get like four pages to rank like four like fourth sure. or fifth or something like that yeah so you're probably better off to just stick with it and like keep driving at cool. that one um and it's tough to know how many uh <laughs> we have a, a dog that's ready to come in here <laughs> should we let her in here? she'll be all right, she'll all right. Be <laughs> um <clears throat> so the thing is like i usually think about it like hey i'm gonna do five guest posts because it's like Sure. Around, around, like right. a round number yeah, people or like, like 10. Numbers. Sure. Um, and then I'll like aim for that number and then, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we got to let her in here. Um, so you can, you know, do however many you want. A lot of times, um, like all work, it becomes a little like boring and monotonous if, you, if you're like, all right, I'm going to get 20 guest posts and it takes, you know, eight weeks to get 20 guest posts and you're like just bored with it. It right. becomes a little 
um, just sucky to do that sort of work. So, um, you know, it may be worthwhile to break it up where you do like three at a time and then you like add some more content and then you do another three sure. or whatever. Or maybe you have like a, like a, a stable for a, a lack of a better term of maybe five articles that you want to see ranking well so you could rotate through them and write guest posts for you, each one of them so you don't get burnt out or do outreach for, you know, five of them. Right. I don't do that, but you could do it that sure. way because of the reason I said before, right. where it's like I'd rather have like the one page rank number one right. than like five pages rank number three. Sure, it, de it obviously depends on the search volume and stuff, right. but in general, yeah, I'd rather have like one ranking number one, and then like once once you conquer that, you can move on to the next one, sure. then the next one, um, because what happens is um, it, de it depends on the term and stuff like that. But a lot of times if you're going from like number eight to number four, like your traffic will like double or triple. And then mm -hmm. if you're going from like four or three to number one, it'll go up by like six or eight times or sure. something like that. It's sure. pretty dramatic and it's surprising like every time, but when right. you hit number one, your click through rate goes up and you just get way more traffic than you probably would anticipate. Yeah. I mean, I saw total traffic to the site over July almost doubled because I had stuff start ranking in the top three and number one for a few terms too. So gotcha. the traffic is there. Gotcha. Up with those higher numbers, obviously, so. Okay. Well, and you know, you just gave me an idea to, I can ask you questions about guest posting since you've done quite a few. So how many guest posts have you done? For my first site, I guess I probably have 10 or 12 out there now. Okay. But maybe a few more than that. All right. And then how many other guest posts have you done, like, for other sites or anything uh, like that? A handful more? Yeah, a handful more, maybe five to six other guest okay. posts out there total. Cool. All right, so you've done quite a few. And then I guess, like, what was the toughest part to get the, the guest post starting out? Any part of the process, actually. Well, uh, you know, I saw really great success right away uh, with just in the guest post campaign because I did some pretty organic outreach and I saw some pretty good results fairly quickly. I was able to knock down, like we had that other article about six right away mm -hmm. where, you know, people wanted me to write. And so I was kind of just keeping up with all the volume of that. I guess one of the harder parts was like what we've been talking about, trying to figure out how to fit in links back to my site organically or at least naturally you know how mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. word an article kind of built around one link back to me right because you can't put in you know 10 links back to your site right, right. as great as it might be nobody's going to let you do that uh, unless you're paying for it and like we talked about yeah. that uh, so yeah I think one of the, the harder parts was to start thinking about how I'm going to yeah get the juice back to a certain page and mm -hmm. what would what would that page should look like? How I would Got pick it. the page out of my you know, 40 pages? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I think, I think once you get past the hurdle of like actually getting the guest post, like now, mm -hmm. now that you know right. how to get your anchor text in there and like a link to the pages that you want to rank and all that stuff, then like that's the easy part because most of the time the hard part is like the actual outreach and like getting people to accept mm -hmm. it and then just getting over the fact that you're going to get rejected like yeah 80% of the time or so i Even, guess it, an interesting thing for me too is uh discovering what genres to go after for guest post outreach and especially with affiliate marketing cuz i was so dead set on you know knowing what i'm talking about writing articles based around my products and that sort of thing and so i, I I had a natural inclination just to go after similar, look in that same mm -hmm. vein. And I, I didn't, obviously it's not exactly what you want to do. You kind of kind of branch out a little bit from there. Uh, and so I had to discover and kind of dig around and find mm -hmm. new areas of interest where, you know, people might, who looked at, who wanted my product X, but who also did Y, right? And so to find right. that natural correlation between two areas where you could see similar demographics of people. Right. That's a really good point. When I first started looking into guest posting and then decided that I didn't want to do it because I didn't, I was like, no one is going to publish my guest post. I was, you know, after this blue pen 
deal, right? And then I would kept trying to like find blogs that talked about pens and blue pens and, and all this other pen related stuff. And those are like your direct competition and they're definitely not gonna like let you guest post there because <laughs> why, why would they do that? Um, so I was like, yeah, I just don't see how anyone gets any guest post. But if instead of going for blue pens, you say go after um, you know something a lot more broad, um, like several levels up, like not any sort of writing utensil, but say like um, school supplies or something like that, just something super broad where there's like a million products ranging from like laptop computers to pencils, um, you can approach those blogs because they cover like a broad range of stuff. Um, and you could pick anything that's kind of related to them. So all of a sudden, like there's millions of blogs that you can go to right. and get your link to your blue pen page because they, you know, they're interested in more sure. content. So anyway, the, the point being, you should look more broadly than you think, mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to actually get the guest post. Right. You have to avoid your competition. Otherwise, they're just not going to work with you. So in fact, I've, I've been getting some... Um, some of my own email templates back at me for <laughs> guest posts on my own sites, which is Perfect. always fun. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> I guess, you know, then it's working, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's making the rounds. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. All right. I'm trying to think if there's any other, um, uh, questions I have for you around guest posting. So you did quite a few guest posts like quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, did you slow down? And if so, why? I did slow down, I guess, for a few different reasons. I, you know, I kind of, I was working kind of off of our construct of the content traffic sprint, mm -hmm. content traffic profit sprint model mm -hmm. that we worked on. So, you know, there was, I built some content that I worked on doing some guest posting, to generate some traffic to monitor how much that would change that. And then right. uh, with the inception of the new site, I started working on a little bit of outreach for that, content generation for that. Now I'm kind of going back and doing some more, refocusing on blog commenting more, guest post outreach for the original site, just yep. so I can start, kind of work, rework the cycle again, rinse, wash, and repeat. Sure. Um, and to be honest, because I, I had questions like this, you know, now I want to see what was ranking well, what's what pages were doing really well, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, kind of how to, grapple with those you know now I know that I have X Y and Z are doing really well so I can start doing guest post outreach with those in mind uh, yes. as, you know and then I can present article ideas that would allow me to build in those those kind of natural backlinks mm -hmm. to that okay got it that makes sense and <clears throat> you know that helped me realize I, I may occasionally contradict myself a little bit but um, to be you know thinking of the the uh, content traffic profit sprint um, that did work because, and we won't mention your, your profits this last time around for July mm -hmm. since we'll have a whole post around that. Sure. But um, you know, it works, right? Cause you, you did the content a minimal amount. You did yep. the outreach to get the traffic you're profiting now and then you're going back. Right. Um, and you know, it's worth mentioning that um, you know, you pick, you know, the term or the page that you're after to rank, you do guest posting to that. You'll do some other work later just so you don't go crazy. The thing is the work that you did previously is paying off now, right? right. So that's great You because we need to see wins as we go. Otherwise, you do a bunch of work and right. then you're like, this isn't like there's no uh, <laughs> revenue at the end right. of the day. Why am I doing that? Yeah, so you go back and start again and you can reassess, you know, if you're doing the sprint, you can figure out, you know, um, is there another page that maybe is, could be more profitable mm -hmm. that's ranking, but I haven't done any outreach for it. Right. So at that point you may, you know, before you start another, you know, outreach campaign, maybe you ignore my advice before there's always exceptions, right. Where I just, you know, focus on one and I, I'm, I'm at that one until, I'm done with it. Sure. Maybe, um, and I actually did this. So I looked at the keywords and the pages that were like close to ranking. And then I made a decision, you know, which is, you know, easiest for me and most profitable. 
and you know most attainable for me to go after, and then I'll run the campaign on that one. Sure. And then um, you know maybe it it changes because you know other factors change. Maybe one of your competitors their site has been penalized, so now you know there's a little room for you to move up, and maybe you need to refocus on that term. Sure. So um, so focus on one term unless you should you know move on to the other one. So. How's that for advice that's hard to follow? <laughs> How about this uh, in terms of KC for a certain term, right? So you've, you've spent all this time doing your keyword research. You've written the article. Sure. You've, you've done all the good SEO. But I've got uh, both pages, let's say, are at 25. They're ranking 25. One has a KC of 7, and the other one's got a KC of 27. Would you, I mean, at the end of the day, you want to see which one's going to be more profitable. You want to see, oh, there's other analytics you want to look at. Uh, but it, would it take less backlinks, obviously, to that lower KC to get it bump up faster? Would you try that one first? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everything else being equal, right. probably. Most of the time, though, it won't be so clear because it'll be like 27 and 23. Right. <laughs> and it's like... <clears throat> how much do we trust the numbers because it's just an approximation right. of other factors that are from other sources, which are also approximations. <laughs> right. So like if it's 27 and seven, well, that's easy, but sure. most of the time it's like, you're going to have to go and look, you'll have to look at the, the top 10, the other sites, um, you know, content. I would right. also look at the content and figure out, you know, maybe you could actually improve the content on your page also sure. and do the campaign. Yeah. And then that'll make a difference. I mean, sometimes if you go check out the top 10 and look at the average number of words, yeah. um, you can see like, oh, I need to add like 1,500 more words so that I'm on par with the people that are in the top right. three or five that are niche sites. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe, you know, you want to add 2,500 words so that you actually have more content on there. Yep. And then do your campaign. So right. you have a couple factors helping you out. That's I guess that's what I've seen the biggest success with for the terms I'm ranking really high with. I blew everybody else out of the water in terms of sheer volume on the page, right? So the, uh, the closest competitor might have had 2,000 words. I went four, right? Just double the amount of content. And right. both of those pages that are, I guess I'm, there's several now, but all of those that have that kind of content domination are outranking everybody. I, 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 who knows what it's from because everything is so shadowed. Yeah. But that's, it's really seemed to help. Yeah. I, and I think, yeah, there's definitely something to that with the really long form content with, you know, a lot of images. Those images are like rich with um, like keywords as far as the alt text name of the file like mm -hmm. everything is optimized around that and the more content you have you know as long as it's well written the more you know keywords you could potentially go after the more long tails you're, you're sure. just going to get so now this hasn't happened to me yet uh but with my da increasing it's at 19 now what's the game plan if somebody were to approach me and say hey would you accept a guest post on your site from me Sure. What is there a criteria that you'd be like, sure, but I want, you know, a link exchange kind of thing, but you know, I don't know, I have no idea. Oh. So, you know, I haven't I'll have to think about this for a second, but in general, probably I would accept it. I would probably say I want it to be um of a certain length. Sure. And I would probably make sure that it was it was something that I could put in plenty of affiliate links of my right. own in there. Sure. So, you know, number one, you get free content. Yep. And then number two, it's a money making like page sure. for you. Cool. So, um, you know, that is something I haven't thought about too much. Um, but that's a, yeah, that's a good point. So, and it, I mean, I take that from the fact that I was able to get guest posts because, you know, one thing that I put into my pitches um, is it's, this will be a great post for you to put in your affiliate links. Sure. I can suggest a pro I can suggest products for you to put into it. And then of course, you know, any blogger who, you know, is familiar with the, the program, the Amazon program, they're going to say, sure, like 
you obviously can write reasonable content and you understand that this is like a transaction and that, you know, I'll be able to make this a money making post for me. So everybody wins. Right. Um, so yeah, I would accept them and I would just sort of like, you know, make sure they know. Yeah. Uh, it's like 2000 words or whatever. Sure. Like, <laughs> make it worth your while. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you should be able to figure out some keywords to, um, you know, target within there, make them really long tail or something like that. And then uh, you should get like some traffic to those pages. Cool. So have you gotten any pitches? No, not? no, I have not. Um, and then you also asked about like a link exchange yeah. situation. Um, you could, um, you could do that. Um, uh, probably how I would handle it is, um, like find a post that they already have in mm -hmm. place and just sure. say, Hey, it looks like my content is really linkable from this particular article. Um, you know, here's two or three sentences. I think you could add in there that fit with I the see. particular, that way you don't have to write a freaking guest right. post for them. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, it's a page that already has some, uh, like page authority associated sure. with it instead of, you know, you write a guest post, there's technically like very little authority. Sure. There's no other links to that page, but if you find one that's maybe been around for a year or two, well, maybe it's been shared, maybe it has links to it, maybe sure. not, but at least it has, you know, six or 10 or 12 months of history. Up sure. There. So cool. Very cool. All right. Any other questions on guest posting? No, I think that ties it up for me. All right, cool. Well, thanks for joining us again. Hopefully, um, We'll do more of these. Uh, let us know in the comments if you have any questions about guest posting or um, you know clarification on any of the stuff that we said. Hopefully, I didn't contradict myself too much, <laughs> just a little bit. So, all right, thanks. See ya.